Okay, folks, we had a couple of four-pointers off the coast of Oregon yesterday. And just north of that, off the coast of Vancouver Island, Canada, we had a couple of mid-five magnitude quakes. Now, both these sets of earthquakes did occur on the western subduction zone of the Americas, that we've had our eye on for quite some time. The cold wave in Europe is continuing, folks. We reported yesterday that over 100 people had died from hypothermia. Well, folks, it could be getting worse as we speak. Last night, uh, in Austria and Germany, as many as 10,000 people had to go without power, without the ability to heat their homes, and the temperature never got above 7 degrees Fahrenheit. For these uh, anti-Putin protests in Russia, the temperature never got above negative 4 degrees Fahrenheit, and regardless of what you think about what's going on there, you really got to give it to the protesters coming out in that kind of weather. We had a pretty big earthquake uh, in between the always interesting Gulf of Aden and the Arabian Sea. We had a five-point earthquake in Iran. Now, while seismicity has been increasing here and in the surrounding areas the last couple of weeks, this is the first time we've had this magnitude of earthquake happen within any kind of proximity whatsoever to one of their nuclear plants. Having a look at the total ionization in our F2 layers across the globe, you have the scale up there at the top. We do not see uh, 15 megahertz ionization in our, as a critical frequency in our F2 layer a whole lot, but we do have that area just to the west of Indonesia registering at 15 megahertz critical frequency right now. That is where we had that seven point earthquake a few weeks ago. The other area of interest is that little yellow square at the northern part of South America where the Caribbean and Cocos plates meet. That's interesting because it's so close to the equator. At that latitude, we should not be having such a low ionization. Now, why are we interested in the ionization in our atmosphere and our protective layers? Well, folks, we've been really looking into this dual trigger mechanism for earthquakes. Now, not that this kind of thing would cause an earthquake to happen out of nowhere, but that these ionizations could actually affect the release of that pressure. Now, it happens in two ways. First, a lot of the energy that's up in our uh, upper layers gets captured by the magnetic field lines, inducted into the earth, and it has magnetic and heating effects on the metals and rocks in our uh, uh, underneath our feet. Now, it's very easy to see how that could have an effect. Uh, the second part is not as easy to understand, and it's on our atmosphere. Folks, this is the total electron content. You can see both those areas of interest uh, on the extremes, high and low, are, are there as well. So you can know it's not just the F2 layer. It's all the way through our atmosphere and protective layers. Now, folks, when you have that much of an extreme uh, ionization throughout the atmosphere, it can move pressure systems around, change sea levels, change the heating of the air. And folks, this is all related to how much pressure is being pushed down onto the oceans, being pushed down onto the tectonic plates. Now, where are we getting this over-ionization from right now uh, in the extremes? Well, folks, we are in the middle of a coronal hole stream from that long, skinny coronal hole that was pointed at us a couple of days ago. This straight line right here is very misleading. We are well above uh, ambient speed uh, levels for the solar wind, uh, very high. We are getting uh, juiced up uh, little spikes, a uh, little bigger than a little spike here recently on the ACE uh, uh, electrons and the proton flux but folks all of those things uh, the solar wind speed the ionizations the electrons the protons those are all related to that coronal hole if the induction mechanism uh, if the trigger mechanism excuse me as to be believed whatsoever we have maybe 24 to 48 hours left of uh, some increased strong earthquakes of course it's not an absolute correl uh, correlation but definitely something to keep our eye on uh, that's the news folks we have a quiet sun be safe